Hello everyone, welcome to the Diffusion Tractography and Connectivity video tutorial. My name is Gabriel Girard. I'm a research scientist at CIBM Center for Biomedical Imaging in Lausanne and at the University Hospital Center de Chuv. I'm also affiliated to PFL, the Swiss Federal Institute of Technology in Lausanne. I'm a computer scientist by training. Uh, my research interests are diffusion tractography and structural connectivity. I have been a dive by contributor since 2013. In this talk, I want to discuss tractography method and strategy to estimate the trajectories of white matter pathway from diffusion MRI data. In the first part, I will present an introduction to tractography method available in the dive by library. In the second part, I will be discussing additional parameters and options for those tractography methods. Etienne Saint-Ange will follow up with the talk on structural connectivity estimation from tractography data. Tractography is the algorithmic procedure that takes information from diffusion MRI images and uses it to reconstruct a 3D model of the brain white matter connectivity. On this figure, we have the diffusion signal measured by the MRI. And on this figure, we have thousands of 3D curves or streamlines approximating the brain's white matter connectivity. The topic of this talk is how to get from the diffusion signal to the white matter reconstruction. But first, why are we interested in diffusion tractography? For one is to better understand the brain connectivity. For instance, to follow changes during aging and development or during the progression of neurodegenerative diseases. Tractography has also been shown to be useful in neurosurgical planning to identify which fiber bundle might or might not be affected by a tumor. Diffusion MRI tractography offer a unique imaging modality to probe the brain's white matter in vivo and non-invasively. With diffusion tractography, we want to estimate the trajectory of white matter pathways. They can be divided in three groups. The first is the associative fibers. They connect the gray matter cortical areas within each hemisphere, like these short U-shaped fiber or these long fiber connecting the frontal lobe to the temporal lobe. Then we have the commissural fibers. They are white matter pathway connecting the two hemispheres. Finally, we have the projection fibers. They are the white matter pathway connecting the cortical gray matter to the subcortical gray matter or the brain stem and spinal cord. Here's a clip from Professor Leonard E. White dissecting the white matter. He first removes the gray matter, the cell bodies, to reveal the axon bundles. You can see in this clip, the fibrous structure of the white matter that diffusion MRI and tractography can be sensitive to. In every voxel of the brain, diffusion MRI allows us to estimate the orientation of the local structure. Here, the figure show a coronal slice of the brain. The main orientation of the structure are shown. Starting in the green square, tractography follows those orientation and estimate the fiber bundle trajectories. If we repeat this approach across all voxels of the brain, we obtain a set of millions of 3D curves estimating the brain structural connectivity, which we can then use for virtual dissection and connectivity analysis, this time in vivo and non-invasively. For instance, in this video, you see the corticospinal tract in blue, the corpus callosum in red, the inferior frontooccipital fasciculus in green. What do we need to perform diffusion tractography? The first thing is an image describing the orientation of the white matter fibers in each voxel. They can be the diffusion tensors, the orientation distribution functions, the ODF, the fiber ODFs, or peaks. If you're not familiar with these objects, please watch the talk of Ariel Rockem or the talk of Maxim Decoto on the topic. Then we need a way to select a propagation direction in a voxel, given the voxel-wise orientation and previous tractography orientation. For instance, selecting the orientation associated with the highest value of the ODF. 
To this, we need a tracking mask or a stopping criterion to stop the propagation of streamline, for instance, when they exit the white matter volume or reach a region of interest. Moreover, we need to define where the tractography starts, the seeding mask. This can be the whole white matter volume, the white matter gray matter interface, or a specific region of interest. Finally, we have to define parameter of the tracking algorithm, such as the way the data is interpolated, the step size of the streamline propagation, and some additional criteria, such as a maximum curvature to reconstruct smooth trajectory in the white matter. Streamline or polyline locally align with the white matter orientation. Each streamline is constructed from a sequence of 3D points, Pn, where P of n plus 1 is equal to Pn plus a selected orientation V at the current location times a step size delta S. Here we have our seed position, P0. V6 is the orientation connecting P6 and P7 with the step size delta S. This process is repeated until a stopping criteria is reached, in this case here, at P18. With the diffusion tensor model, we describe the diffusion of water molecules with a 3D Gaussian. From these 3D Gaussian, we can extract a principal orientation. It corresponds to the Egan vector associated with the highest Egan value of the diffusion tensor. We can already see the, sp the special coherence of these orientation and our tractography can follow those orientation to approximate the white matter trajectories. For instance, here a streamline connecting the two hemisphere to the corpus callosum or streamline going down from the motor area toward the brainstem and the spinal cord. To perform tractography with the diffusion tensor, we first define the initial position. Then we follow iteratively the orientation of the Egan vector associated to the principal Egan value of the tensor. We stop when Pn is outside the tracking mask or if the angle between two consecutive vectors is greater than a maximum value, here, for instance, 60 degrees. When the tractography stops, we go back to the initial position and start the same process in the opposite direction to form the streamline. If you would like to do this in DiPi, you first need to load your diffusion data. Here, for instance, we use the Stanford data available as example in DiPi, we have our diffusion images and our gradient table with B value of 2000 and the corresponding V vectors. We then define our tracking mask or stopping criterion. Here we define a binary volume corresponding to all voxels of the brain with non-zero white matter fraction. Finally, we define our seed position. Here we take all voxel with the label two, which correspond to the mid sagittal section of the corpus callosum. The seeds variable here is a list of 3D position located in the center of all voxel of our scene mask. Next, we define a tensor model using our gradient table. We can then use the peaks from model function that will fit the model to our data. The two important parameters here are the model and the data. From the fitted tensor model, we can define our tractography parameters in the function local tracking taking as input the fitted tensor in cyan here, the stopping criterion that we defined previously, and the list of seeds. Once we have our streamline generated, we can save them on disk or start the visualization. On this figure, you can see a quick reconstruction of the corpus callosum using the diffusion tensor tractography. Here, the point of view is from above. Although the diffusion tensor model can be used to reconstruct large white matter pathways, it is limited as it cannot adequately represent fiber crossing configurations. A good alternative will be the fiber orientation distribution function estimated from constraint spherical deconvolution, which can adequately represent crossings. In this region where the corpus callosum crosses with the cortical spinal tract, you can clearly see two main orientation on the fiber ODFs. While the DTI, the diffusion tensor, have a disk shape with low anisotropy. To perform deterministic tractography on the fiber ODF, we will do the same as for the diffusion tensors, 
But instead of following the main diffusion orientation of the tensor, the algorithm will follow the peaks or the maxima of the fiber ODFs. At each voxel, we will thus have multiple possible orientation available. Typically, algorithm will follow the peak, the closest aligned with the previous tracking orientation. In this figure, the tractography will likely follow the vertical direction rather than the perpendicular direction in this case. Probabilistic fiber ODF tractography is similar, but instead of following only the peaks, an orientation is selected in an opening angle from the previous tracking orientation. The value of the FODF are used to weight the probability of selecting each orientation. To do this in DiPi, we need first to set our constraint spherical deconvolution model. The first thing to do is to estimate the response function from the data. Here we use the auto response function that takes the gradient table and the diffusion signal as input and output the response function. We can then define our model with the response and the gradient table. Then we fit the model to our data with the peaks from model function. At this point, we have the spherical harmonics representation of the fiber ODF that we can use to define our direction getter. We can now run tractography identically as with the diffusion tensor model, but this time with an algorithm and a reconstruction method that can handle fiber crossing configurations. Probabilistic tractography is obtained in a very similar fashion using the spherical harmonic representation of the fiber ODF and then performing the tractography. Here are the three reconstruction of the corpus callosum we just did. Those were obtained from the same brain, same diffusion data, same white matter mask, same seeds, only changing the model and the streamlined propagation technique. If you want to use the DiPy tractography without going into the Python code, you can use the workflows. In this example, I will use the Stanford data that you can download from DiPy. We start with the workflow DiPy fit CSD to obtain the fiber ODFs from your data. We take as input the diffusion signal, here Hardy 150, the gradient table with the BVAL and BVEC files, a mask file, in this case we use the partial volume estimate of white matter, and output the fitted CSD model to the data in the file hardy150 underscore csd.pam5. After this comment, we have the voxel-wise orientation data needed to perform the tractography. Then we can call DiPy track to perform the tractography from the terminal. It takes the fitted model as input, the tracking mask, the seeding mask, mask and output the streamlines. Here I have selected the deterministic tractography method. You can now visualize your streamline and start bundle and connectivity analysis. <laughs>